hello again and welcome to this workfest session uh making it in the creative industries it's a panel talk we've got three panel members uh, with us today which is fantastic um my name is louisa so i'm part of the careers team um at bath spa and my my um focus is external facing and about um connecting students and graduates with the creative industries so this is um certainly you know an area that um, i work in i work freelance in the creative industries and cultural education and visual arts and i work part-time at the university um so really passionate about supporting um any any students particularly those on creative courses um with their next steps um we have loads just to say it now we have loads of other support available um right now for creative students we've got some grants available we've got some studio residencies coming available soon those that will be for third years um we've got of course the careers team can offer one-to-one -one advice and appointments etc the main thing i said suggest you do is if you search graduate support for those third years on um bus bar website you'll find information about funding and studio residencies and for everyone else if you look under uh, careers and employability you can find loads of support for you or just get in touch with us so we're here even though we're virtual we're very much here right okay so without further ado i'd like to um introduce the panel members so we've got three panelists with us today so first of all we're going to hear from um glenn hayward um, and Glyn is the owner and creative director of Complete Control, which is uh, based in Bath. Um, it is a BAFTA award-winning children's interactive production company and specialising in creating uh, digital content for children's entertainment. So really exciting to have you with us, Glyn. Thank you for, for being here. Thank you. And um, the next uh, panellist we'll hear from is Laura Jasper, who's assistant director. I think that's the right title, assistant director. At Brian Theatre. Yeah, associate, yeah. Associate, okay, perfect. Yeah, I felt like it wasn't quite right. Associate Director, sorry, at Brian Theatre, um, which is based in Swindon. And Laura's, um, it's going to be great to hear from, um, had loads of different experience, trained at Bristol Old Vic, um, and, uh, and then some um, also in America, uh, worked across the UK as an actor, theatre practitioner, and a director of Bristol Old Vic, Vic sorry, Nottingham Playhouse, Salisbury Playhouse, The Globe, and Frantic Assembly. So, I don't know in your five minute presentation how you're going to cover that, but that's fantastic to have you here and, and your expertise um, in theatre based. And then our third panellist is Emma Taylor, who is a Bath based artist and illustrator. Um, and Emma has worked, um, has clients all over the world, um, is well known for her landscape wildlife art illustrations as well as um, silk scarves and mural mural work um, she also is linked with projects with the university um, and local organizations and the abbey hotel and she'll be talking through some of that so some really exciting um, links to be made okay great um, so as i mentioned if you could keep yourself on mute while um, the presenters are speaking um, then we don't get feedback, that's great. And if you have any comments or questions throughout, please pop them in the chat and I will monitor that. Um, and I'll hand over to Glyn as our first speaker. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, well, afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Glyn Hayward. I'm the founder and creative director of Complete Control. I'm going to talk to you five minutes, quick tour of the studio, what we do, who we are. Um, and this is a presentation I shared with our clients. Um, I thought it'd be interesting to see what we do as an agency. Um, I'm also going to show you some things which have helped me um, get to where we are as the company and things which you might find helpful and then some five takeaway points so um, I hope you enjoy. So our vision is to create uh, imaginative and innovative digital content for children and that's just, just a couple of grabs of our work from the Owls of Bath we did some really cool things there through to games for the BBC to Nickelodeon playful innovation and design is, is what we're here to, to do. Uh, we're based in Bath, um, just over the road from the university. We're 20 years old. Uh, we're a studio of 18 people. We've got boundless energy, enthusiasm, and passion for what we do. And the projects I'm going to show you in a minute, they're all made up of everyone plays a part from digital creatives to artists to writers to developers to project managers. So there might be something you'll see here which will really resonate with you. Um, and as Louisa said, we went to BAFTAs for our work. So that's the studio. So that's literally five minutes from Bath Spa, just over the field. So, and I'm really proud of where we are, because we really put Bath on the map for kids digital. 
So we're a leading agency. If people are looking for content for kids, they, they go to Bath and they get it from, from basically Corstons, which is fantastic. We didn't have to go to London. Didn't have to sort of move up and move away from our hometown. So it's all been done here in a lovely location. Um, our brands, uh, over that 20 years, have now got us established to working with the cream of, of A1 broadcast and publishing brands, which we're really proud of to have a, such a, an amazing client base. And then our services, just again, I wanted just to show this to you because I'm not sure who you are as an audience or what if you're thinking of getting into digital or just creative outlets to think, well, where can my talents go? From the say the right going round, you know, games, we do loads of that from writing game stories to illustrating game characters to animating them to programming them, then runs through into apps, into websites. But then also on the left hand side, digital strategy, you know, what what do people want to try and achieve with their Project. So you might be a really good thinker, you might want to be a good conceptual artist. Um, and then television and animation is, is a big thing we do. And then IP generation, which means we come up with our own ideas. So instead of a Peppa Pig, we'll do something ourselves as well, and we look to commercialize that. So again, you might be interested in the creative arts, but also how can you sell your work? How, how can you make money from it? So that's, that's pretty much like all our services which we do. And then the output of that, this is just some, some quick graphs. I've left the text on, because if you are interested in this, download the presentation and have a good read through. But um, some brands you might be aware of, um, Tubbies and things, really interactive learning games. The things which are slightly older, you've got Lego up at the top. We work with Lego to create, help children learn to code. So we took all of their bits and bricks, and their blocks, characters. We wrote a story about these little Lego characters who were lost and had to reunite. So again, creative writing uh, underpinned with lovely creative technology and music to, to make a, a lovely interactive production. Um, and then our app development, that's becoming really innovative at the moment. We're, the one in the middle where you've got the children has some filters like Snapchat filters which can go on their faces for rewards. They can chase their favorite characters actually out into the garden or under the bed. So we're taking characters out into real physical spaces. So again, when you're thinking about your output of your creations, where can that go? Well, that can go anywhere now in digital. It's, it's phenomenal. And then we've got a shoe box with some 3D um, hologram animations, which play from Clark's shoes in the box, which is cool. And then we're doing something for the Magician's Watch, which is magic. I can't tell you about that, but have a look on the website. For then global websites, if you're interested in web design and taking your creation onto that, we do lots of this stuff. And this picture was with, it was at Bath Spa, actually. We went down last year. We, we had to rebuild the whole of the Children in Need website. That took all the team. That took us from project managers, how long it would take, creative designers, where you'll see all the little illustration things on the right, coders. And it was such a big project. We had to use Bath Spa's wall to print off all of the web pages to get a stand back, get a handle on it to then to start rebuilding it back up again. So a fab project, um, which again involved tons of different people. Then again, just like early ideas, all that stuff I've showed you is all pretty much finalized and it's been designed and it looks great, but this is the early ideas. And so if you're coming with strategy or ideas, or I think I'd like something to work like this, our studio does these things called sprints where we can define the idea, we can define a problem, and through creative uh, challenges, we can actually uh, create prototypes, test early ideas really quickly before uh, they actually get built. Uh, we have children in the studio all the time, um, coming in testing our work. It's really important for this age range. So they're just not just doing something and thinking kids will like it. They'll tell you that they hate it if they do. So get them in early. There's some students from Bath Spa in here. There's your media wall on the left. You know, we take content down. Um, and really engage with our audience. So whatever you're, you're, you're doing in your creative work, always good to get um, thoughts and opinions as it develops. Um, and then all our, all our work being digital, we can get all our statistics on it. We can actually see who's using it, what's the favorite character. So that's really nice as well. So um, digital and tech can help with, you know, as I say, things like favorite characters, favorite game levels, etc. Um, TV and animation, we, we do a lot of, uh, we, we look and we look for new talents. This is a, a call out to you guys. We're looking for new artists with new styles uh, to bring to complete control. 
Um, we develop our own children's brands. Is a, is a range of them where someone's come to us with an idea, and we've actually commercialised their brand into a, a series of books, a television show, um, and a learning program. And then our last thing we do is we, when we have some time, we create our own ideas. So we, we will not just work for clients, but we will create our own idea and we will take it to the BBC or Nickelodeon and say, hey, we've got this, what do you think? Uh, and that's three examples in there. So just a few key signs. Now you're probably thinking, well, what are we doing next or where are you going? I'm in the same situation. I'm 20 years as a director of the company. Now we're trying to think, what's our next thing? What's the next thing we want to do? So I go back to my gut feeling of sort of being honest about what I enjoy. And I started this up from a school just down the road, so literally 10 minutes away from Bath Spa. Um, and I didn't have to go far to, I didn't have to go to London, I didn't have to, 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 to sell out. I could actually do what I wanted to do from this lovely uh, space in, in Bath. And there's a Beano badge on me at school there. I must have been, what, 11? So I thought, oh, I'm probably a sign, probably liked Beano and mucking around and kids stuff, so no, good. And then I'll be always inspired by punk music, fashion, and do-it-yourself culture. And that's a brand value which still rings through for today. Really hang on to what you believe in and what you feel is unique to you. Um, so much so I named the company after my favourite track song. So, again, these are just all stories. My company's not called Blue Kangaroo or you know, Yellow Gherkin, things like that in London. You know, it's, it's pretty much who I am, and that is, is a good thing to do. Business skill learned along the way, aside of music, um, digital, which wasn't around then, promoting a band. I used to play in a band, so I'd do all the artwork, I'd do the, the gigs, I'd perform the songs. So I think early creativity is in me, which I was then looking for an outlet to see where I would go. So at this point, I didn't have a clue what I was doing, but I was, I was probably nurturing some skills for later. Then I did an engineering course, looked pretty bored in that picture, but what I liked about that was solving problems. This was the something to open a, a jam jar lid, right? But that's now our magic magician's watch, or it's our owl, it's our physical products, which could be linked with digital. So even though engineering had dropped it, it had really resonance with what I'm doing now. I went to Oxford Poly to do an engineering degree, working hard up there, uh, as you can see. And the computers were like this, you know, Mac Classic and an old PC. Um, but I spent a lot of time in music again and just promoting bands. And there was a band at the bottom called the Candy Skins, which we used to really get on with and used to go and be inspired by their music. Then a couple of jobs after uni, I then set complete control up in 1999. Took on loads of different projects here. And my art and the engineering came together. So I would be artistic to, like from the punk days, this would look good. And then from the engineering days, look at, oh, I think I could actually make this work. So those two things, which might have felt disjointed at that point, came together quite nicely to allow me to have a technical brain. I was doing everything. I was a one-man band. I'd get a job for the holiday year. I was my brother's building company. There's a dyslexia school doing some animation. Mr. Bean came to us. It was all, oh. But then after a while, I, I focused and said, right, let's, let's forget the holiday inns and the building websites and stuff, and let's just focus on children's niche. And that paid off. Um, so all our work then was focused on children and that made us become a leading agency, which was a cracking decision. Um, so behind that, I've got a hugely talented of people behind me, a team of 18. This is our, our yearly photograph shoot for World Book Day, which we look after. And that's some of the teams from developers to artists to musicians all in the room. Bar Spa students, and this is, as I said earlier, get in touch with me, yeah? but this is setting the second year team um, an app project, which is working with a third year team on some um, final year projects. So we're really open to get you into the studio, look at what we do, um, and see how your strain of your um, course could, could work into digital. Uh, we want some awards, some local ones, which have been fun just to share with the team what we've been doing. And then we've won some super cool ones as well. So being in a field in Corston and having a couple of baffles on the shelf has been pretty, pretty amazing. And then back to the university thing, that's Nick on the right. Now, I used to see his band now together. Only last year we came together and we created a hit TV show for CBeebies called Nick Coach Popcast. So it all sort of came round. So I think that was a really nice um, thing. Very quickly, five standout things I've learned. Somebody asked me this, so I thought I'd share it with you as an agency owner. Work hard and be nice to people. 
always remember seeing a poster when I first started, and that's always rings true for me. Be enthusiastic about what you do. Enthusiasm rubs off on people. People want to do business with people who they enjoy, especially the kids' industry. So be really enthusiastic about it and show people you're excited by what you do. Um, be yourself and be different. That was back to the, the clash and having a working in a field in course. And that doesn't go against me, that goes for us. So again, go for your gut feeling, what, what represents you well, and don't fall into cliches. Always play the role of the client. So I, I, something I always do is just before anything goes out of the studio, you know, is this what the clients asked for? Is, is, this, is this good enough for them? And always just, just have that little stop gap before you send something out. And I think that's really important. Be become a client in your day-to-day -day thinking. Um, not necessarily for you guys now, but us as a company, we do it not just to be driven by client work all the time. Make time for your own projects. So the Nick Coke TV show was something I was thinking about for ages and now it worked and some others. And clients love seeing their agencies do cool things for themselves too. And that's me. Um, share the deck. You got me email address. Love to love to chat to you. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Glenn. What a, what an exciting journey and uh, and loads of opportunities. It's just really really lovely to hear. Thank you. Okay, great. So we shall. Um, there's no questions at the moment, so we'll we'll come back to questions at the at the end. Um, so I'm going to invite. Um, I've forgotten the order. Sorry, it's Laura next. Yeah. To, um... Okay. So um, when I thought about what to talk about, um, I was trying to think about what would be the most useful for a group of people from loads of different creative backgrounds coming together and being at a point when you're going to leave um, academia and go into the real world and um, the advice, maybe that would be most useful for yourselves. So I thought I'd start with me. And um, when I was 27, I met with an artistic director of the Actors Touring Company. And I had a chat with him and I was just asking, how he got into the industry and, and um, his experience. And he told me one thing that stuck with me. And that was that he stopped being a part-time painter and decorator at the age of 40. And at that point, only then did he fully become a full-time director. And I thought that was a really interesting thing to remember that um, as you may or may not be aware, entering the creative industries is not the most straightforward path that you will take, unlike something like medicine or education. As a creative person, it, uh, you'll be going like this uh, roundabout. And I think only till now I've realized that how special that is um how do i go next one okay so in an ideal world when you graduate from bar spa you will slot straight into your dream job but for those of us who don't or hadn't straight away you might ask yourself what am i going to do in the meantime and what next in 2007 I graduated, um, I wanted to be an actor. So I did everything I, that is, I thought would get me there. So I applied, I waited, I auditioned, I waited, I waited some more. And then they get, you get to a point when you go, I can't really wait any longer because waiting isn't gonna get you anywhere. So, being a creative person, I started to think outside the box. Um, I knew that I needed certain things in order to pursue a career in the arts that I wasn't going to get from just sitting and doing nothing. So I swallowed my <laughs> pride and I went to do some temping. And the hardest knockback was that the roles that I was applying for in temping 
really didn't want me. <laughs> and um, my pride thought that I was um, qualified. I thought, hey, I'm an actor. I'm a graduate. I've got a degree. Why don't you want me? Um, and that was a really hard thing to get my head around. So I guess what I'm trying to say is when you're trying to break the mold and break out of what people might the box people might put you and your career into you have to do the work for them you have to make the steps for them someone who thinks linearly um, needs someone like you to put the dots together so I broke it down into what an actor meant and I suddenly was aware that I had amazing transferable skills that I could apply into a whole host of ro roles. So these apply to an actor, there may be more. Um, I imagine that a lot of them will apply to you um, and there will be others that apply to you as well. So my advice is to start doing this exercise, take this away because not only will it make you feel really good, um, but it will be invaluable in the future. So, so I'm not here to tell you that these jobs on the left are for you. I would say you might be interested, you might not. Um, these are a whole host of roles that I have taken on as a temp. I was quite amazed to go back and have a look at all of them. Um, but what I am saying is that initially, it's important to be really open to absolutely everything that comes your way. I spent six years um, balancing a range of these roles with acting roles. And were they a waste of time? Absolutely not. Because each one gave me um, the next step into getting where I am now. So in 2011, uh, when I turned 25, um, there was a pinnacle point when I stopped saying, okay, cool, um, I'm just gonna do anything and thought, okay, what actually do I want to do now? And, and I could only have got to that point if I had done the things that are on the left of the screen. Um, so with a sort of juicy combination of fear that I'd be living at home forever with my parents and um, bravery in jumping into a new career path, um, I realized that I wasn't necessarily best fit to be an actor and that I got a lot of um, pleasure and enjoyment out of directing. And that choice came out of the back of a trip to LA. So I had never done a gap year. I had <laughs> never traveled on my own. So there were so many things that this trip gave me that were beyond the training that I went there for. Um, yeah, so I went there to study, I went there to learn, I went there to throw myself into completely terrifying situations and push myself out my comfort zone. And that's, that's really important. Um, and I came back with the most amazing clarity of where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do. And since then, the decisions that I've made have been towards the goal that I want to go to. So at the time I was in a temp job as a PA with scope, which again had all these transferable moments where I could um, use the skills that I had and, and enjoyed it. So that meant I got money, I was flexible, um, I had time. So I was working out how I could direct around my job so I was doing evenings, I was doing weekends, I was working my holidays, um, and I produced and directed three productions that then got me onto Bristol Old Vic, where I did an MA. And through that, after, after graduating, I still didn't not temp. So I, I temped, but for the purpose I knew of getting me money to get to the next stage of where I wanted to go. So, um, the jobs that I had, which were something to do with administration and pensions, um, suddenly I realized that's not going to get me what I need. And they became more streamlined into things like facilitation, 
leading a room, working with people, working with young people. And so have I reached my dream job? I am not sure. I definitely didn't start out to work with young people. But now that I'm in this role, um, I realized that you need to make the role that you have work for you. So my contract, I'm only contracted for two years. So I'm aware that next October it will end. So that gives me a point in which I need to be aware what skills do I need in order to get to the next thing? And how am I going to make my job allow me to gain those skills and make those opportunities? And graduation is just one step. It's the first step on a really exciting journey that you're about to embark on. And if COVID has taught me anything, it is how important it is to be aware of yourself, all of the amazing things that you offer, and to be adaptable to the constantly changing world around you and open to all of the possibilities that come your way. Ooh. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Laura. Really lovely to hear your journey and inspirations there. Thank you. Amazing. Um, okay, great. We shall um, dive in more with questions at the end, but that's, that's brilliant. Um, so our final panelist, I shall hand over now to Emma Taylor. Hi there. So a bit like Laura, um, I became sort of full time doing my sort of creative side of things quite a lot further down the line after leaving school and things. Um, so I, I, I failed my A-levels, wanted to go to college. My parents uh, wouldn't let me go because I'd done so badly in my A-levels. So I ended up doing a business course and went up to London, aged 18, worked for a law firm, really got gained some really useful skills doing that um and then did something completely different and then ended up working for the editor of the sun newspaper as his pa so that was obviously a real contrast from the law firm um and you know so they sa sound very sort of standard sectorial jobs but actually within the jobs each job i've had um i would you know, basically try and take up any opportunity that came my way that was creative. And during all my full-time jobs, I'd also be sort of doing commissions, um, you know, on the side to, you know, earn a little bit of extra money. And um, while I was at The Sun, I dealt with all the political cartoons and illustrated books for them. And, and so it sort of went on and on from each job I went to. I then went to Emerging Television and then did more creative stuff with them alongside being a PA. Um, and then I took a bit of a gap, had children, and then my last PA job was working for Kevin McLeod as his PA um, of Grand Designs. And that was brilliant because, again, my sort of creative strengths I could use alongside my PA work and, you know, working on different programmes. And so it was great. But um, I really got to the point where I just was so desperate all that time I had been doing you know, my sort of creative things on the side. I couldn't ever quite have the strength, the nerve, whatever, to dive in full time. So um, what I, I basically scouted around for all the opportunities I could find. I really was so proactive. And I got a business grant through the Arts Council. And through that grant, it was fantastic because I sort of helped you know I went to various workshops on branding and on on marketing and things like that and I began to just build up my confidence um and the big big turning point for me and it was really scary and I was so out of my comfort zone was going up and doing a um, sort of retail trade show up in London and I did top draw and that was to be honest that was the best thing I did um while I was up there I got spotted by um jules clothing um so i'm doing stuff for them now and it just it just really gave me such a sort of insight into into the sort of whole retail trade um world 
And from then on, things, opportunities came and I was doing murals. I, I do a lot of corporate murals now. I, I illustrate books. I've got a, a line of uh, silk scarves that I sell. I do stuff for jewels. Um, and it really, it was interesting. It just gave me the confidence to just grab anything that came my way. And, you know, something that you, you know, something that might, might come your way might seem a bit boring or not very exciting or may not lead to much, but actually always grab every opportunity um, by the horns because you just never know where things will go. Um, and another example of that was uh, I, I did the illustration for um, one of the owls, sculpture owls um, for the Minerva uh, Bath Sculpture Trail. And that was working with the Abbey Hotel. Well, to be honest, three, three and a half years later, I'm doing so many different projects with them. Uh, I've done mural for the ski bar. I've done the snow globe. I'm curating exhibitions in in their um, art bar. So, you know, if someone had said to me five years ago, ten years ago, you know, I'd be doing that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have believed them because I wouldn't have had the confidence. So, I think you know, I suppose to take from here is really any opportunity that comes your way, grab it. Any help that people are offering grab it don't ever be scared to go and suggest things you know if you're working in not a particularly creative job and you're getting frustrated and you want to do more of your creative side you know suggest come up with ideas you know it's it things can lead on to all sorts of exciting things um and that also leads me on to, to uh the abbey hotel in the autumn hopefully there will be a uh, good opportunity for you graduates to potentially um, do something with us in an exhibition we're hoping to sort of put together. Um, we had a graduate exhibition about 18 months ago um, from students from, from your um, School of Art and Design and it was terrific fun. The artists absolutely loved it and in fact I'm in contact with pretty much every single artist that um, took part in that exhibition and one of the artists uh, has sold I think three Big, big, big paintings in the hotel since then. Um, so, yeah, just really, you know, best of luck. Um, you know, you've got such exciting times ahead of you. Um, you know, it might seem the path that you start on might not necessarily be the path that you, you want to be on or you dreamed of being on. But honestly, just things are always around the corner. And it's just about taking those opportunities, building up relationships with people. That's really, really important. Um, you know, really build up relationships. And um, yeah, good luck, really good luck. Thank you so much, Emma. We we didn't get to sort of see your slides in terms of go through them. Sorry. <laughs> if you, that's fine. If you, um, if everyone's happy to share their slides afterwards, I can send them on to the, the group. Do, did you want to go, did you want to show us them or, or are you happy uh -huh. to do it? Yes, I mean, these are just literally examples of some of the things mm -hmm. I've done. Uh, just showing really the different sort of creative paths. That's an, a, an example of my standard, it's top draw. Top draw is brilliant. Financially, it's it's a bit of an outlay, but honestly, it is so, so worth doing. And the support, the marketing and social media support you get through top draw is just second to none. It was absolutely fantastic experience. I would recommend it over and over and over again um, and then this is just an example I'm a friend of Jules um, clothing company and this is just an example of some of my products that that's on there and that's again that's great fun you know building out a really good relationship with with a fantastic company they're great people to work with um, and one thing if you are thinking of putting together your own brand this book how to style your brand by Fiona Humberstone is the best book ever honestly i really really recommend that um and building up good local suppliers again if anyone wants to to find out you know good framers i can re recommend printers all that sort of stuff you know do get in touch uh another very good website if you're doing prints and cards and um yeah prints and cards really is something called love from the artist which is a non-profit uh making company that supports artists that's really really good creative bath they're fantastic as we all know so um again tap into them you know build up relationships with them 
44 AD exhibition space. Katie there is one of the most enthusiastic professional people I've ever come across. Um, again, she does all sorts of uh, uh, exhibitions, um, supporting artists. You know, it's really worth worth going and chatting to her. And the Abbey Hotel. We are really, really keen as a hotel to be, you know, just supporting people coming out of um, college or, or new, you know, even, you know, in the middle of their life, beginning to, to start an art career, we really want to try and help people and give them that platform to, uh, you know, have somewhere to exhibit and um, support them. So, yeah, that's it from me. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'd love to just open it out um, to everyone here attending. Are there, if there are any questions, do you just unmute and ask or pop them in the chat this is a great chance we've got three um amazing creative professionals to ask your question to okay so the first question that is here from gregory thank you um so i think this is to to all the panel how do you develop trust to clients um or trust in clients when you're seen as new to the industry in terms of the limited initial work you may have at the start perhaps glenn that's that's a bit more aim to you how do you develop that clients trust you when you're new um i think back from our, our experience is the enthusiasm it i mean trust comes um yeah through enthusiasm passion and going above and beyond there might be something you sometimes just go to a client say, i showed you uh, sorry i said th things which we do off our own back sometimes you can just identify saying that no, we've been doing this we think it would be perfect for you and if they can see your enthusiasm for that you might not have had a commercial um project it doesn't matter i think you're looking it's like dragon's day you're looking at the person and believing in the person sometimes more than the actual oh, we've done it before type of thing so um yeah package it up as best you can all the enthusiasm and tell them how great it is and, and how, how good it is for them yeah um that's what i said that's great it's uh, like like you'd said glenn about putting yourself in the client's shoes so really important to think about how how you're part of the solution what are they going to get yeah. i mean we did a, a, a we were going to do a big for, for disney and it was it was a real big what we thought well we took to them and said we've done this ourselves before and we actually failed on this part of it we failed because of these things but we fixed we, we did but we did this so when we came to them we actually presented something we'd done off ourselves which had some failure associated with it which was great because they're saying wait well, great you're not going to fail on ours because you've already done it so again taking failure and, and talking around those types of things isn't, isn't a bad thing brilliant thank you um emma and, and and laura do you want to respond to that as well about developing trusting clients or new people you're working with when you haven't got a lot of work behind you <laughs> um i was going to say something about again just joining the dots for people so things like um so we run an outreach for young people so we want to get we want to get new people on board we want to sell the fact that prime is a great place for for their young people to attend but i guess it's knowing your target audience and how you talk to them so if we talk to a parent they'll want to hear things and trigger words that are different to if we talk to a young person so i i I hope that helps as well. Um, make it very clear for your audience about and tell them why they should be investing in you. And um, did you want to add anything, Emma, or, or I'll move on to the next question? Yeah. So the next question is is for you, Emma, actually. Um, do you have any tips, this is from Becky, do you have any tips for starting a freelance business and getting your name out to potential clients? So similar in terms of how to get started. Yeah, I mean, a bit like Glenn said, enthusiasm is is really infectious and that's so important and putting yourself in front of people. Um, I think obviously developing a brand is very important. Um, and, you know, that book that I recommended is really, really worth getting and that will really help you sort of focus your mind as to you know what you are what you what you're wanting to be what you're wanting to sell it's um and then obviously social media is really really important and you know linkedin that's 
fantastic. And then literally on the ground, you know, going um, going into shops and, you know, showing them your, your you know, what, what you're making and things. Um, I've built up some, you know, fantastic relationships um, doing that. And that obviously doesn't cost money as such. You know, if you've got samples, it just, all it costs is a little bit of confidence. But honestly, it's it's worth it. It's so worth it. And, um, it's good fun as well because you're, you know, you're meeting people. Um, and then I think once you obviously can do, you can do charity fairs. I mean, that's something I did for a while was I did, did charity fairs, which were great fun. And that was a good way of getting your name out into different areas, not necessarily the County that you live in, but you know, further, further afield. So it's a combination really of online, you know, social media and on, on the ground. Um, and then, as I say, you know, it, it, financially, it's a bit of a, a bit of a gulp, but it's worth it doing the trade shows. Um, so, yeah. Happy. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, so next question from Amelia um, to any of the panelists. Do you have any advice for getting work experience or internships in the creative industries? So across the board. I mean, I, I can say we, we, we actively encourage that. Um, Bath Spa is, is our linked uni. Um, across all sorts of creative music, students in from that to bring um, music into our productions, creative writing. We want to do um, a community project out in Bath. We've got a lovely tech idea. We want to bring some sort of drama and some acting to that. So we want to start talking to you about that. Um, game testing, you know, we're always looking for that just to get your foot in the door. So can you help us test some kids' games, you know, get paid some beer money? And then once you're in, you're having a look at the studio and think, oh, I could do this. So we're really open for um, internships. Uh, just try a few things. Try, you know, as I showed you those services, are you more project managing more than designy or are you more arty than techy? And I think I've seen so many sort of people think they're this but come into a studio and think well i think i prefer that actually so um definitely try and do as much as that as you can and um, see what see what you like uh i would add as well um you are all very special <laughs> you all have so many things to offer um and i think being able to articulate those special skills that you have to someone in a business or a creative industry is is really um important uh, be brave just ask for cups of tea and uh, ask for meetings and um if you can make yourself seem like you're the missing link in what they need then you, then you'll go really far yeah laura i completely agree with you i think it's it's yeah, it's opportunities, isn't it? And it's it's enthusiasm um, and you're getting yourself getting yourself in front of people. Lovely, thank you. Re really valuable advice and um, and really encouraging. And actually, just thinking about the sort of the specialness or the uniqueness, as you say, Laura, just about the brand. You know, you're, you're almost your own brand. Perhaps thinking to. Um, Emma, as you were saying, style your, your your own brand of what you may be making or producing, but also who are you? What are your skills? And um, and as as um, Glyn said as well, you know, what different design or focus or creativity can you bring? Everybody has got their own um, their own creativity to bring. So just yeah, put it out there. That's that's really exciting. Um, so there's there's another question here. So. Um, from Alison, it says, would Emma or the others be willing to talk a bit about changing career midlife and the risks that has to home and family? So at that stage of life. Yeah, um, it, it is a, you know, it's quite scary, isn't it? You've got bills to pay, you've got mortgages to pay, you know, whatever. But as Laura said, I mean, I did all sorts of jobs. And, and as I got busier on my creative front, I then did, let, you know, fewer and fewer hours on my other jobs so to speak and you know it, it's a it's it's a brilliant way of doing it because then obviously financially you've always got to pay the bills but you know as the money starts coming in a bit from the creative side then you can drop the hours you know from from doing doing whatever so I think flexibility that is hugely important be really flexible um you know don't, you don't have to 
conform to a certain way of doing things it's you know the world is your oyster so um you can you can make it work work for you really can i also add as well don't feel guilty about investing in yourself whatever that is whether that's um i need this amount of time and this is going to um develop my career or uh yeah you are you are product you are you are um a valuable person so yeah that's also very important lovely thank you thank you both that's great um and another question here from charlotte so this is for uh, laura are there any things you'd recommend doing before finishing university to prepare for a career as a performer or someone wanting to create their own work? Yeah, um, and I think this probably applies to anybody going into any creative industry is um, utilise the time and the resources that university gives you. <laughs> that's space to be creative, that's, that's people, that's technology, that's rehearsal space, that's equipment, that's mentorship from teachers, um, because those are the things that you will need when you're trying to make your own work or be out there in the industry. And I would say the, another really important thing is make as many uh, creative or uh, contacts and relationships, which is what Glyn and Emma were saying as well. Those, it's those relationships that are gonna get you and springboard you onto the next opportunity. So if you can get people to come and see work whilst you're making it, in, just be brave, invite people to do that. If you can use this opportunity of creating digital content whilst we're living in this world or whatever world we'll get to live into, um, do that as well. But really uh, enjoy the resources that you have at the moment. Yeah, this goes to almost like a question I heard earlier about if you haven't done something, how do you present yourself? And so many really good students get in touch who have showed us something. They've actually said, we haven't actually learned how really to make a game, but we did something here at home and we thought this would be quite nice for complete control to have a look at. It's like, wow, you guys, you, you did that, did you? Yeah, it just shows initiative. It shows you've, you've used that university time, like Laura said, to do something but then show it to a potential client uh, employee and that really is a, a leaps and bounds you know i could see 10 cvs but if someone's then said oh by the way did you a little game just a little something a little fun thing a little creative thing that's just really wow you're in so do use your time to think about just doing some little little things like that for yourself which will will be brilliant Yeah, amazing. Really, really good advice. And I think a lot of what's coming through from from all of you is is about that the, the confidence or, or the bravery, you know, both those things together or, you know, um, the bravery and then the confidence will come later when you just keep going. And actually the, the whole failing or the idea of failing is just so, so essential to keep going. You know, five times something doesn't work or your product or your, your piece of work doesn't get picked up. But the sixth time it, it will. And in the process, you're learning and growing and meeting people. So so that that has come across. Yeah. Can I just say Angry Birds, that company, Rovio, they failed 49 times. They're about to go bust. Right. Add enough. All their games never worked. The 50th one the guy came in and said, I've got an idea about flicking some birds. Save the company, all right? So take that away it's, it's, it's to keep trying. It's a really good good example. Um, so there aren't any more questions in the chat. We do have a few more minutes. So if anyone has got last questions, do pop them in there. But I, I'd perhaps just ask, so that's a good, good takeaway. But um, also just if each of the panel members have just got one last takeaway that they'd like to, um, they'd like to say, and then there is one last question to ask after that. So just, uh, just sorry, from each of the panel members, if, have, have you got one last takeaway to provide to students? What, what would be your last piece of advice to cap it off? Um, well, a, a bit like what you just said, actually. Um, you know, being turned down um, 49 times or, or, or whatever, that's not, that's not a negative at all. Because each time, you know, every time maybe something 
doesn't get accepted or whatever, you are going to improve. That's a journey. It's all part of the experience, isn't it? And it's, it's um, you learn each time. It's a very, very positive thing. It's not a, not a negative thing at all. So um, I think just really, yeah, don't be disheartened if, if someone, you know, doesn't like one particular thing because the chances are there'll be hundreds of people out there that will really, really like it. So, yeah, good luck. Yeah, I think you're all exactly that. And I think you're all creative people doing different creative things. If you try and do something creative to, to, to make somebody's eyes prick up and go, oh, make you stand out from somebody else. And that's, a, that's a creative challenge. It can be a really simple one, really fun one. I had a CV once came through. Someone made a milk carton. It was lovely. It was on my desk and everyone's, oh, what's that? Oh, oh, who's that? Who's she? Where's she come from? It's just something simple, but it's creative just to get the, um, and then that's, you know, things like that are fun as well, right? But you're doing the right thing and being on here is good as well, so well done. Um, use this time, really get what you can out of university whilst you're there and um, persevere don't give up and think about building the contacts that you make because that is the support network that's going to um, raise you up. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you all three. There's, there's been so much good advice and top tips. That, that just summarises it. Um, Gregory has put a question. Um, how did you stand out at the start of your career journey and get initial work? Um, so perhaps this is actually, you know, for each of you, what was the what was the break? Perhaps would you say? Um, for me, it was that clarity in knowing that I wanted to be a director, and that came from okay, how do I do this? I had a chat with someone, and they said, if you want to do it, just make your own work that's where you'll learn from doing rather than waiting for that job opportunity to come. So it was that um, initial uh, sort of jumping into being brave, meeting some people who were also in a similar boat and just collaborating together and getting the ball rolling. Yeah, I think for me, it's that little bull with the animation i think as i said a few other projects which were lovely you know websites and stuff like that but as soon as i started I could see it was the illustration of the character doing some animation seeing children react to that and laughing and having fun and learning from it i thought that that's the pathway to to go down so probably the little little cow probably did it for me um yeah I, again it's it's was just um i suppose I suppose going up to top draw and that sort of really really inspired me seeing all these creatives up there and you know we were all in the same boat we it we met you know i met so many people up there in the same position that we were all just swapping um ideas and things and i suppose yeah i mean you, you only get one shot at life don't you so just you know just go for it just follow your dreams lovely thank you that's that's great to um to, to wrap up with that and I think um, a real sense of just keep keep making whatever your art is and or your you know your creativity and, and it will change or it, try different things but that seems to be you know an over overriding message as well is is make your own stuff that, that makes you happy and then and then you can sort of put that out there or stand out a little bit because you've um, shared that so I'd like to thank so much um, Emma, Laura and Glyn for being here with us and sharing your time and your presentations. It's just been fantastic to have all of your advice and, and inspiration and, and hear about your journeys. And I think that's massively helpful to our students um, across the board. So thank you so much for your time and thank you to everybody who's um, attended. Um, I'm just going to put in the chat a link to Creative Bath. So just um, in terms of sort of next steps and building your contacts and building on some of the, the, the advice that's been given and particularly that question around finding internships or you know experience in the creative industries. Um, creative Bath is a local organization uh, or a membership organization of creative, or, creative organizations um, in Bath and um, lots of different you know, media companies and design and tech and individual practitioners, um, et cetera. So it's a good one to link with, it's free to join, then you'll be in their network. 
um, and hear about events, go to their networking events and meet people and talk to the people that are presenting and what have you. Um, and then, of course, do get in touch with us at the careers um, service. We're all, we're all still here working remotely, but we've got lots of support, particularly for creative graduates right now. So in response to the, the COVID situation, but also lots of support ongoing. So do stay in touch with us and we can help you very much. Um, so thank you again to our panellists.